All right, here's some food for thought. And I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm doing it right and you're doing it wrong. Contrary, I think every grazing method and system has its right place at the right time, especially in context, depending on how much time you can invest into something. Well, we practice something here at Tick Creek Ranch that is called total grazing. You may have heard of it, it's kind of a hot button issue these days. And I think that's mostly because it's very misunderstood and hasn't been implemented by some who have tried it the correct way. So what it has done for us, and I'll just tell you what it's done for us, um, over MIG and AMP grazing and selective grazing, uh, is it has allowed us to grow like three to five times as much forage on our land in the first season of practicing this. So understanding how it all comes together, the proper time of year, when to hold your animals back and graze them slower, or be more selective, uh, ultra high stocking densities, lessening your stock density. So these are just all tools that we use as total grazers. And it's not a one size fits all prescriptive grazing. And if you don't do it this way, then you're not doing it right at all. Well, it's actually probably one of the most adaptive forms. So we do everything from selective grazing to non-selective grazing, ultra high stock densities to low stock densities. We harp on optimal calving season. Uh, we harp on genetics, really well adapted genetics, and you know nutrition, uh, and then the method of grazing itself. So in that you will find there's tons and tons of information. If you want to know more, I highly recommend that you take some of Jim Elizondo's classes online, his coursework, uh, or you can attend the grazing school we're going to be hosting here at Tick Creek Ranch, Alton, Missouri, November 7th and 8th. So time's getting close. Uh, we have we have spaces available. If you'd like to participate, if you'd like to be here and see what this grazing system is all about, um, please feel free to reach out to us in the comments uh, on this, or you can reach out to us at tickcreekranch417 at gmail.com. So just a real quick backstory. I'll try not to get too long-winded here. We used to be mid grazers and amp grazers. And if that's what you do, that's fine. You know, everybody does their own thing. But what it has allowed us to do is really, really maximize our land's performance while still maintaining animal performance. So I'm gonna flip the camera around. I'm gonna show you these cattle because again, there's this big misconception that all of us total grazers starve our animals and they all look bad and have these low breed back rates. And that's just not the truth. Jim really, really harps on animal condition that fat cows, fat cows, fat cows. That's what he says. So, you know, that's first and foremost is most important, but I will say it's really, really easy to fall in love with non-selective grazing and with ultra high harvest efficiency because you move so slow, you grow so much grass, but some people are doing it at the peril of their animal's condition and they're going to have animals that aren't going to breed back. So, you know, that is one caveat. If you don't pay really close attention to your animal's condition and square the manure really well, you can lose condition really fast. So this course will teach you how to avoid that. And really ultimately, my preference is, is to learn this in the fall, okay? So if I would have known more back last year, I would have done things a little bit different, but luckily I kind of stumbled on the right things because you need to know how to prepare yourself come spring to set yourself up for your rotation and how you're gonna graze. And yes, we are those crazy people that only graze half of our land and rest the other half. If you're stocked appropriately, that's about the perfect ratio. So you're gonna stockpile one half of your farm for your winter feed. And in doing so, you're gonna increase your carbon content in your soil exponentially. I have seen more growth, faster recoveries, healthier sward, more diversity, uh, softer soil, more water infiltration, and ultimately just way more production and forage in the areas that we've rested really long. And they have come back, and I mean like, wildfire they're awesome it's the most improved areas of our land and by a large margin so let's look at the cattle i'm going to show you folks they're not skinny and starving so most of the herd here are south pole and south pole crosses except for this girl and her calf she is a hereford red angus we do keep horses in with our cattle as you can see let's go take a look at a few of these moms here they are all lactating we have not weaned yet we are getting very close to weaning Here's one of my, this is my prospect bull. He is an absolute dandy. It's very masculine. Does all the things that I wanna see. He could have a little bit more room and capacity, but that's all right. I think uh, he's a dandy. We have some really nice bull calves in here. Uh, this 5'11 here, she just keeps amazing condition. Let's see, let's get on the other side of you guys. Let's show everybody what you're made of. 
The selfie stick kind of weirds them out. <laughs> they're very, very tame. I can pet most of them, but the selfie stick, they're not too sure of. So I'm gonna show you kind of just what most of them look like. And then I'm gonna show you the worst animal in the herd. And, uh, and although she is the worst, she's actually looks pretty good. She is tiny. I will say that she is absolutely tiny. So that's her on the far side. And uh, that's a calf next to her, right? So you can see she's just a miniature. She's a very, very small frame. Let's flip around, I'll get you on the other side. And so she um, keeps the worst condition. She has the poorest condition of any animal in the herd on the regular. Um, so she's kind of our canary. We try not to adjust all of our, you know, grazing management based on the uh, lowest common denominator here but that's okay it also kind of if i watch her condition it really makes sure that i keep better condition on these lactating mothers so you know she's not necessarily fat but she looks okay this girl here 573 you know i think you can see these cattle aren't starving we try to keep some pretty good condition on them Got some dandy calves. I'm really, really pleased with how they uh, how they came out. All right, so that was just a little show and tell. So full transparency, we do supplement protein certain times of the year if we have to. Now, my choice is soy protein, right? Soy meal. It's 46, 46, 46 and a half percent. And it does absolute wonder. So when we get them in some really rank old forage like this, I'll periodically maybe every other day give them one to two pounds per animal and it's plenty to get the rumen active and and their manure to be loose and keep great body condition so you know at roughly 22 cents a pound that's really cheap in my opinion to be able to harvest this old rank forage that's just a great return on investment you know so i can throw oh twelve dollars twenty dollars in protein supplement in here and that allows them to harvest another, you know, thousand pounds of dry matter forage without them losing condition. If I don't supplement that to them, they'll turn their nose up at it and they'll lose condition. So, you know, I'm getting more than a round bale of hay for in dry matter forage, you know, for 12 to $20, uh, depending on the protein content of the actual grass that they're consuming. So these are some things, you know, we're not perfect. We screw up all the time. I screw up all the time, but this has really, really allowed us to start dialing it in. And I have a lot to still learn, don't get me wrong. I don't claim to be an expert on this. I claim to know enough to have increased our production on our farm many times over. That's all I can promise. So I know this, if it can work for us, it can work for you, but you also have to take into account, it is a pretty large uh, investment of time uh, as far as, you know, you're going to have to dedicate yourself if you want to run this style of system. It's very hands-on. We move our cattle up to four times every single day, right? Now, not always. If we're selective grazing them, sometimes only one or two times per day. But when we keep them moving four times a day in ultra-high stock densities, and what I've noticed here, 400,000 pounds or greater stock density, that's when they really start becoming non-selective and uh, all the way up to, well, we've had them up to almost 900,000 pounds an acre. And that's when you really, really see the benefits of this grazing style. Now, again, you gotta watch them. It's, it's not plug and play and walk away, right? So we're looking at a goal here in our land someday to get to about a one and a half acre to one animal unit, 365 day a year carrying capacity with no additional hay inputs. So that's our goal. I think we can achieve it even on this terribly rocky, poor, poor soil. Uh, it'll take some time, yes, but this method does improve your soil faster than anything I've seen. It's it's quite phenomenal, really. It, you know, people think it's snake oil. I can promise you it's not. You know, it goes back to the Kreider study, and that that is kind of, it's a study that was done many decades ago. I want to say it was 50s or 60s, and this man did this test. He's a scientist, and he took seedlings, right, and he clipped them repeatedly, but remember not before, or he actually clipped them before they were fully recovered. And so they determined by taking the top of the plant off, it ends up shedding roots or culling roots and the root shrinks and gets shorter and shorter and the plant eventually dies. Well, all that study proved is that if you go back and top a plant before it's fully recovered, yes, you will kill it, 
right? So that's what it proved. We don't believe that the regrowth is driven by photosynthetic activity. We believe that the regrowth is driven by root energy stores and the crown energy stores, and that's what brings the grass back up. So when we graze the way that we, we preach, we take as much as we possibly can, unless the animals start losing condition, and we get it close and tight to the ground, and what the regrowth looks like is phenomenal. It's very, very leafy, highly palatable, great leap to stem ratio, and you're not leaving all those stems out there that are respiring and taking energy from your plants. So once again, if you want to know more about this grazing method, I know I've ran my neck for a long time, so I'll get out of here soon. Check us out. Hit us up in the comments. Tick Creek Ranch, 417 at gmail.com. That is again, November 7th and 8th, right here in Alton, Missouri. So we hope to see you there.